Welcome to Summit Kids. My name is Katie and I am so excited that we get to be here again together. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to pray, to talk with God, and to see what He has for us today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this new day, God. I thank you that we get to learn about you, to read the Bible, and see what you want to teach to us, God. Thank you so much for all of my friends that are watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Mmm, cakes are my favorite cereal. Do you guys have a favorite cereal? I want you to pause this video and talk with the people around you to figure out what everyone's favorite is. Have you ever been at the grocery store with your brother or sister and it's time to decide what cereal you want to get? You want Cocoa Puffs, but your sister wants plain Cheerios. In that moment, you get to decide. Are you going to put up a fuss and say, that's not fair, she always gets to choose? Or are you going to say, you can decide, we can get Cheerios. You can choose humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. There are lots of times in our life that we'll have to decide if we're going to dig our feet in and try to get things to go our way, or if we're going to let it go and put someone else first. We can remember that Jesus showed humility by giving us the ultimate example. He put others first, and that turned the whole world upside down. Today we're learning there's always more to discover about God's plan. Say it with me. There's always more to discover about God's plan. You see, it's really easy for us to want to be first, or the best, or everyone's favorite. But we can remember Jesus' wild upside-down example by putting others first. We can remember that there's always more to discover about God's plan. You see, God has a plan for you, and we're going to learn more about that in our Bible lesson today. But first, let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Our memory verse this month is found in Philippians 2, 3. Now, Philippians is found in the New Testament, which means that everything there happened after Jesus was born, and then everything in the Old Testament happened before Jesus was born. So here's what I want you to do. Pause this video, grab your Bible so that we can read it together. Are you ready? Here we go. Philippians 2, 3. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. So what's that talking about? I want you to pause this video and talk about it with the people around you. Then hit play so we can keep on going. Philippians was written by Paul, and he wrote this to a group of Christians in a city called Philippi. He wrote this to encourage them, and us, to live like our lives belong to God. You see, it's easy to want to put yourself ahead and, and not think of others, but we can put others first and treat them like they're valuable and important too. So, to help us to remember our verse, we have motions. So, I want everybody to stand up so that we can do them together. All right, are you guys ready? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do the motions, and then I want you to do the motions. Here we go. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Way to go. Now, before you sit down. I want you to turn to the people next to you, give them the jellyfish high five, and then tell them one way that you can choose to put others first. Now, be creative. Think of something new. I believe in you. Ready, set, go. Next, we have offering. So, what's our offering all about? And why do we give an offering? Our offering is all about generosity. We give to help others, and we give because God asks us to in the Bible. You see, it's a reminder that God provides for us and takes care of us, and He loves us. We can trust Him. We don't have to keep all of our stuff and our money to ourselves. We get to be generous. If you and your family would like to give today, all of our offering is going to the Salvation Army in Indiana. They have a food pantry and are partnering with others to make sure that families in our area have something to eat. 
So be sure to go to our website and click on the button to share with others. And now it is time for today's Bible lesson. So sit down, make sure you're listening because God always has something that he wants to teach to us. Hey you guys, I am so excited we get to be together again today. My name is Pastor Christina and my very most favorite thing is when I get to talk with you about the Bible. Because here's the thing, God had people write down everything that's in the Bible hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago so that you and I could read what's here, we could know what's true, we could know God, and we can learn to hear His voice. Because here's the thing, God wants to talk to you, and He wants you to talk to Him too. So today, we get to look at the Bible together. So we're picking up today where we left off two weeks ago at Easter. At Easter we celebrate how Jesus died on the cross and then on the third day he rose from the dead. Now here's the thing, we're gonna do things a little different today. I'm so excited because I'm gonna need your help. <gasps> right? We've missed this, haven't we? I have. So here's what we're gonna do. Today for the Bible story, I'm gonna need sound effects and I'm gonna need you to stand up and do some things and there's even gonna be other parts too. Either I will tell you what sound effects to make or it's gonna show up on your screen. So be paying attention and here's the other thing. Guys, I need us to fully commit to what we're doing today. Are you in and can you do this? Okay, so let's practice with the first one on the screen. <laughs> All right, it's time for the next one. Now I need you to really own this one. Do it like you mean it. Ready? <gasps> well done! Okay, last practice round. Are you ready? Do it. Okay, <laughs> we're all in this together, right? You guys are in for what we're doing today? Good. All right, so we are jumping in to Luke chapter 24. Grab your Bible and let's do this. We're picking up after Mary had gone to the tomb early Sunday morning and Jesus' body was gone. She had gotten Peter and John and they came and looked too, but only the cloths that had been wrapped around Jesus' body were there, not Jesus. But it, how could his body not be there? Peter and John didn't know, so they left. But Mary stayed, and as she was crying, Jesus showed up. In flesh, alive, real, there, with her. And he talked to her. And then she went to tell the disciples, it's true, he's alive. But they didn't understand. It didn't make sense. Hmm. All right, so if you've got your Bible, let's open up to Luke chapter 24, verse 13. Here's what it says. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus. It was about seven miles from Jerusalem. All right, stand up. So, one more lap. All right, great job. You can have a seat and let's keep going. All right, so here's the thing. The Bible doesn't actually tell us what they saw or what they heard while they were walking. But don't you think if you were going on a walk somewhere, you would hear some things and see some things? Me too. And I feel like the right thing in this moment is sound effects. Okay, so I'm gonna name some things that they would have seen probably, and then you do the sound effects. Ready? So as they're walking, they probably saw some cows out in the pasture. And then they might have seen some dogs barking over a bone or playing with a ball. What about they probably passed people along the way, and the people might have had a crying baby. <laughs> Great job. Okay, so 
These are things that they might have seen as they walked. But these guys had a seven mile journey to talk about all the things that had happened over these last few days. Hmm. All right, so now we're picking up in Luke chapter 24, verses 15 and 16. Here's what it says. As they talked about those things, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but God kept them from recognizing him. You guys, these were two followers of Jesus. They were walking along, they were talking about what had happened to Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus starts walking beside them. But what does it say? But God kept them from recognizing him. Wow! So here's what it says in verse 17. Jesus asked them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stood still and their faces were sad. Okay, look at the person next to you and make a very sad face. So sad. But here's the thing, they really were sad. And then it says in verse 18, one of them was named Cleopas. He said to Jesus, are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? Okay, so that would be like one of your friends calling you today and being like, hey, I, I haven't seen you for a while. Where have you been? And you would be like, dude, do you not even know what's going on right now? We're doing school at home for the rest of the school year. Right? Like, how could someone not know what's going on today? And that's how they felt then. How could you not know what's happening? Everything that happened to Jesus, it, it hadn't been a secret. The whole city knew about Jesus being put on the cross and how he died. Everyone knew. And so how could, how could this stranger that walked up to them not know? Here's what it says next in verse 19. What things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did in the sight of God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross. Okay, so for this part, I need you to stand up. Rise and shine, we need to get some blood flow, ready? I'm gonna tell you the rest of what they said, but we're gonna act it out as they did it. So you do what I do, ready? They kept talking to Jesus and they said, we had hoped that he was the one who was coming to set us free. But now it's been three days since everything happened. And some of our friends surprised us this morning. They told us that they went to the tomb. But it was empty. Okay. Whatever good shocked face you have, I want you to do a really good shocked face to the people around you because they said the tomb was empty. Great job, you can have a seat. All right, so let's pick back up in verse 25. Are you ready? Here we go. It says, Jesus said to them, how foolish you are, how long it takes you to believe all that the prophet said. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures. He began with Moses and all the prophets. Jesus was like, guys, don't you know that this is what had to happen? And then right then, as they're walking along on a seven mile trip, he starts explaining to them, going all the way back to the Old Testament. He tells them how all along God's been telling what would happen 
and how it would happen for the Messiah, the Savior, Jesus, to come and make a way for you and me to be saved. So as they approached Emmaus, the two guys were about to turn in and Jesus acted like he was going to keep going. But they still wanted to talk with him, so they asked him, stay, stay. And so he did. It was getting darker, and so it was time to stop traveling for the night anyway. Jesus agreed to stay with them, and here's what it says in verse 30. He joined them at the table. Then he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but then he disappeared from their sight. You guys! Okay, here's what I need. Do your best surprise face, like for real. Here's the thing. Jesus walked with them. He talked with them. Then they invited him to come. He sat down and he did what he always did. He took the food and he thanked God for it. And then they knew it was him. And then he disappeared. Okay, I, just one more time. You're so epically surprised right now. They realized Jesus had been with them all along. No wonder he could explain to them what everything meant. Jesus is alive. They were so excited that they got up right then and they went straight back to Jerusalem to tell everyone the good news. They've been walking seven miles all day long and now it's evening and they turned around and went straight back. You know what that means? You need to stand up and you're gonna walk around again but this time you need to go the opposite direction that you went last time because now you're going back to Jerusalem. Ready? Imagine how excited they were. I mean, they had seen Jesus alive. They headed straight back to Jerusalem, and when they got to the other disciples, they were in for a huge surprise. The other disciples told the two guys they knew it was true, Jesus is alive. And then the two guys started telling the disciples and all the other folks there who had gathered that they had walked and talked with Jesus. They told them everything that had happened. It was really true and they knew it. Jesus really is alive. <laughs> the disciples were starting to understand that God's plan is so much bigger than any of them thought. It's bigger and stretched further than any of them ever imagined. And here's what you and I need to remember. There's always more to discover about God's plan. The disciples thought that they'd seen the end of the story when Jesus died on the cross. They thought it was all over and this was all it was ever going to be. They had no idea that God's plans are so much bigger. And you and I, we can feel that way too. We can feel like this is it. This is the best it'll ever be. But we have to remember that we can trust God, that he sees beyond what you and I can see, and this isn't the end. Maybe you feel that way today. Maybe it feels like I'm never going to get to see my friends again. I'm never going to get to go back to school. It's always going to be this way. Because sometimes it does feel that way. Or maybe you have something going on in your family and it's really hard and really sad right now. And it feels like it's always going to be hard and sad. Here's what I want to remind you. God loves you. God made you. And God is with you. Even though it might feel like it's always going to be this way, you and I 
can trust God and know that he really is with us. Because here's the thing, God loves you so much. God actually sent his son Jesus because you and me and every single person in the whole world has said and done wrong things. And those wrong things actually push us away from God. And that's why God sent his son Jesus who never said or did anything wrong. Jesus came and he took the punishment for every wrong thing you and I and all of us have said and done when he died on the cross. But then on the third day, he came back to life and is still alive today. And anyone who believes in Jesus and asks him to forgive them, he does. The Bible says that anyone who believes in Jesus and asks him to forgive them of their sins, the wrong things they've said and done, he does. And he makes them totally clean. We call that asking Jesus into our hearts or salvation. I want you to think for a minute. Have you ever asked Jesus into your heart before? Have you ever asked Jesus to forgive you for the wrong things you've said and done? Have you ever decided that you want to follow Jesus? If you want to do that today, we're all going to pray together. And so I want everyone in the room to bow your head and close your eyes. We're going to talk to God and repeat after me. Say, dear God, thank you for making me. And thank you that you love me. Thank you for sending Jesus to take the punishment for the wrong things I've said and done. I'm sorry, God. Will you forgive me? And will you help me to follow you? Today, I'm choosing to follow you. Will you help me to remember how much you love me, that I'm in your family, and that you always have a bigger plan? In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, this is a really big deal. Did you know that in the Bible it says when just one person asks Jesus into their heart, all of heaven throws a party. So there is a party in heaven for every person who asks Jesus into their heart. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to celebrate too because it's something worth celebrating. We do a five second celebration. You need to go wild. You need to be excited. There's going to be a countdown on your screen. As soon as it finishes, I want you to sit down and we'll finish up. Okay, so now I have two important things for you. First, if you ask Jesus into your heart, will you tell an adult who's with you? And then, will you have them email me at kids at summitpa.church? That way I can send them some stuff just for you to help you learn about God and know God more. The second thing is our challenge for this week. We've been waiting for it. Okay, for real though, our challenge for this week is choose to trust God and to put others first. Even if it feels sad or hard or lonely right now, remember, God has a bigger plan. You can trust him and you can choose to put others first. Can you do it? What an amazing story. I can't even imagine what those men felt like when they realized that Jesus was walking with them the whole time. And then he vanished right in front of them. Those men realized that there's so much more to God's plan that they could ever imagine. Sometimes humility is admitting that we don't have all of the answers and that's okay. Jesus showed these men and he filled in the blanks and connected all of the dots for them. He used the scriptures to show them that he really is God's son. And just like those men, 
You and I are never, ever done learning. There's always more to discover about God's plan. So what does that look like for you today? It's simple. Make the wise choice and see how you can learn more about God. Never stop asking questions. Always discover what's in God's word. And choose to put others first. That's a way that you can show God's amazing love. Well, you guys, that is it for today. But don't forget, if you go to our website, summitpa.church, there are activities there for you that you can look at today to help you remember everything that we learned. And there's also a bunch of resources for you to have throughout the week. And there's worship music. That's amazing. So head over to summitpa.church so that you can get all of those amazing things. It was so awesome to be with you today. Have a great week. Bye.